Well, welcome to another edition of our State Fair interviews. We are virtual this year. We would love to have been on the State Fairgrounds at the State Fair building uh, on that stage talking women's gymnastics, but instead, here we are on your computer screen giving you a team update, talking about the State Fair, and hopefully having a little bit of fun. So it is uh, the time to put under the spotlight women's gymnastics. Head coach Jenny Hansen joins us. Coach, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Um, well, you and I talked last on one of the Gopher Talks a few months ago, and we talked about, um, you know, what a difficult time it was in the spring to, to get the season chopped short. I want to ask you now, just as a quick follow-up before we get to your athletes, um, what the summer was like and now uh, trying to push forward into the, uh, you know, into the uh, fall and into the winter months. Um, how has this uh, stretch of uh, time been for you and your team? Well, it, it certainly has been what, like one we've never experienced before. Um, you know, we, de we really normally get to train with our athletes in the summer, and we actually just got back this week. So it's been a long stretch of us not seeing each other in person, um, but we continue to stay in contact every single week, sometimes multiple times, just to check in and let everybody know we're thinking about them and uh, knowing how excited we were to get back whenever that time came. Yeah, and now let's introduce the athletes. Anna Loper is with us, as is Lexi Ramler. And uh, Anna, let's start with you. Uh, what was the summer like for you? As uh, Coach mentioned, you weren't able really to, uh, to do much in terms of uh, in-person training on campus. So um, how did your summer go, one, as a, as a gymnast, and two, just in general of trying to stay up to date with everything? Yeah, it definitely took a lot of getting used to, a lot of adjustments. Um, kind of just had to take it day by day because there was a lot of unknowns going on. So, I mean, it was kind of nice just because I haven't been with the family in a couple of months. So to be able to spend that long with them and then um, to be able to finally come back has been really nice. Were you um, in South Carolina for most of that time then? Yes, I was. So <laughs> had a bit of a heat <laughs> stroke over there, but <laughs> Yeah, it was well, good. I suppose in the springtime, though, it was okay. As we were shoveling snow maybe in late March or early April, you were, you were enjoying some sunshine, right? Yeah, it was pretty warm then, but yeah, it was nice. <laughs> Lexi, how about you? How was the summer months for you? And were you able to get into a gym someplace to, to work on, work on uh, some of your uh, stuff? I was. Um, I was actually able to go back to my home gym um, in Winona, Minnesota at Kids Sport. So in order to, you know, continue training through this crazy time, um, Hallie Remlinger was also there. So she's a teammate as well. So we were kind of able to train as, you know, buddies. And then just being back with um, my past coach was actually, you know, a nice pleasant surprise, not pleasant surprise, but um, nice to just experience that one more time this summer um, back in my home. Now you have been uh, so prime and so good. Um, wh what are some areas still, even at your elite level, are you trying to work on to, uh, to take your, your game, so to speak, to, to a new level if possible? There's always something you can work on. Um, you know, it, if you have something, you know, how do you make it bigger? How do you make it better? How do you make it the best kind of thing? So there's always something to work on as well as, you know, throwing some new skills and trying some new stuff. And, and how about, uh, Anna, for you, uh, with your skill set and what you were trying to do, did, were you able to get in and do some workouts uh, someplace in South Carolina? Mm, yeah, so I was also able to go back to my home gym, which was nice. Um, and, yeah, just working on the little details, little things I can fix and improve for this year. Just really trying to stay in shape and keep the cardio up so that once we do come back, it's not too difficult. <laughs> And coach, what is the plan now? Um, I, I know in your case, because the season starts a little later, you're not maybe in a position that cross country and football and volleyball and such are in. Um, and obviously everyone hopes the season can happen at some point. Uh, in the short term though, uh, you will be able to, you're allowed to work out with, uh, with the team and stuff as school gets started? Yeah, yep. So right now we've welcomed back a, a few athletes. Anna's one of them. And we get to do volunteer practice with them. So that's been nice. So they've been able to get back in the gym a little bit. Uh, and we're welcoming the team kind of in, in groups here. We've got a couple more joining us this week, a few more the week after that. And eventually we'll have everybody back together again. Um, but we'll definitely probably start at a slower pace than we have in the past. Got to get everybody on the same page. And we know they've all been faced with different uh, realities and that some have had a great gym to go back to and have been able to practice a lot and others uh, didn't have the same opportunities. So we kind of just have to get, bring everyone together, get them back on the same page and, and start building from there. 
I know when you and I talked earlier in the spring, you were talking about, you know, as you mentioned, Zoom meetings with the team and seeing them on the computer screen or on the phone or, or FaceTime or what have you. How has it been now as in the recent weeks to see at least some of your team in person and, and get to uh, coach them that way and, and just hang out with them, I suppose, that way? It's wonderful. I mean, it was so hard not to give them a hug, I got to say. <laughs> but it is, it's just wonderful to see them and have the conversations and, you know, just the little, even the side conversations that you'd have in between events that uh, you just, you haven't had, you know, you, you, we talk about normal, serious things that kind of impact them on those meetings, but just the little side conversations, I think are sometimes more meaningful and we've missed out on that. So I'm really looking forward to just being able to connect with our athletes uh, daily again. It's going to be great. Lexi, I want to take you back to last year. You had such a great year again. Um, it seemed like every week I was getting an email that you were, you know, gymnast of the week in the Big Ten or a national honor here or there. And, of course, you had the, the Big Ten out in, in Rutgers while we were out there with men's basketball. That was kind of a fun uh, – you joined us at halftime, I remember, of that game out there. Um, the, but I wanted to ask you about, you know, unfortunately at the end when the season just gets shut down and you guys are set to host Oklahoma in a sellout and contend for NCAA honors and all those things. Have you been able to cope with that and handle it and, and get past it? Because I would think, uh, man, that had to be extremely difficult knowing what success you had had up to that point and what the future in that particular stretch of weeks could have had. Yeah, it was definitely hard. Um, we were really looking forward to that weekend. You know, it was senior night. Uh, sold out with Oklahoma there. So we were really looking forward to it and for it to kind of be canceled and then season to be canceled. It's, it was really a lot to take in for the whole team um, and for everyone. But, um, you know, I think all of us have really just found, you know, the gratefulness of getting these opportunities and getting the chance to train as a team. Um, and so I think we're really just taking it day by day and seeing this as an opportunity and to enjoy every single moment. Yeah, Honor, I've, in, in doing a lot of these interviews, I've talked with a lot of different athletes from a lot of different sports who said it did offer a little bit of perspective when you have something that you love to do and love to work at and have a passion for, and it, it gets taken away in some way, shape, or form, even if it's for a small time or a long time, that um, all of a sudden you find out, one, it might be good to step away for a minute and catch your breath, but two, to get back to it really, really rekindles maybe that passion. Did you find that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the first couple of months or weeks, I guess, was pretty difficult just to cope with it. But I think, yeah, putting everything into perspective and realizing how grateful we need to be for being able to do the sport and having our teammates and just being able to be with each other every day, um, kind of put that in perspective. And I think moving forward into this season, we're all just going to be really grateful for every opportunity we have together. Coach, uh, as you oversee this team, what are some things you have to do now? Obviously, you've always kind of been a figure to, to lead and to try to build chemistry and all those things. But now in doing that, you also have to try as best as you can. And some things aren't always in your control of keeping your team safe and healthy and following protocols. So how do you go about um, coaching a team uh, moves on, on the floor and what have you? But also, here's how we have to you know, be responsible and try to stay as safe and healthy as we can. Well, we've started talking about it really since the, the first day that we thought we would come back. So we've got protocols definitely in place and we're, we're trying to, and they're even um, changing a little bit daily as we continue to get in there and realize how things function. Um, but it is something that you know, we, we try to really do um, uh, obviously daily and make sure we're doing everything the right way. Uh, but I think one of the challenges is we want them to bond and spend a lot of time together, but also in a healthy way right now, which is uh, challenging. And I think that's one of the, the beauties of the summer for us normally is we get to get our, our, our freshmen here and they get to bond with the team. And we haven't really been able to do that. So um, that is, that's one of our challenges is how do we build this team chemistry right now when you know we're asking them to stand six feet apart and not to spend a lot of time together, but knowing you need to spend the time together to build that chemistry. Chemistry. So that's that's probably one of our biggest challenges we're trying to figure out right now, as I'm sure every team is, you know, how, how do we continue to build this chemistry when they've been apart for so long um, and doing it in a safe and healthy way moving forward. Is there a challenge too, just in regard to everyone's using the same equipment kind of in the same room and, and, and there's still some unknown as to, you know, can, do you have to clean a, you know, do you have to clean an apparatus or rings or who, uh, bars or what have you after every athlete goes? And I don't know. That's why I'm asking how, how challenging has that been? 
Well, I think so far so good. Like I said, we only have seven in there and, you know, we've got a, a team, a small team, you know, we're, we're 19 athletes in a facility that's 8,500 square feet. Uh, we can separate, we can be pretty distant from one another. Our beams are about almost seven feet apart from one another. So we can continue to train and, and keep our distance that way. Uh, we've put little X's all over the gym for people to stand on so that they know where to keep their distance from. Um, but they typically only train in groups of about four or five on an event anyway. So, I mean, we're kind of a socially distant sport just in nature. So we're able to accommodate, I think, a lot of the training we need to do without making major, major changes, which I think is, uh, it'll feel a little bit more normal when they all get back. Yeah, and given that, is, uh, does that give you reason for optimism that there will be a season at some point, whether it's after January or before or what have you? Well, you know, I, I, I am very optimistic. I think there's a lot of things that we can do to create an environment that is safe and healthy for our athletes. And so, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of hope moving forward. All right, I got to ask you guys a little bit about the state fair since we're on the uh, virtual state fair stage here, so to speak. And uh, Lexi, of course, you're, you're from Minnesota and um, I'm assuming, but maybe I shouldn't assume that you've been to the fair uh, one, maybe as part of the team, but two earlier than that. And you're, you know, even before you maybe came to the, to, to the university that you and your family or friends might have been to the fair. So are you a fan of the fair or you don't like the crowds and try to stay away? Uh, I'm very much a fan of the fair. Uh, my sister-in-law, they go every single year. And so they have it all planned out. You know, we have the booklets and everything. This is where we go for breakfast. This is where we go for lunch kind of thing. So it's definitely a fun thing, fun family thing that we do each year. What are some of your favorite spots? I mean, it sounds like you're very organized, like you have a flow chart or, or a spreadsheet with, uh, with where you get the deals with the booklet. Uh, what, what are some stops that you enjoy? Um, I absolutely love Sweet Martha's Cookies. That is like hands down my favorite spot. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's a, that's a must do. And, and you never can complain when you're buying cookies by the bucket, right? It's, it, you know, they got to be good at that point, correct? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> do you, how about, uh, the Midway? Do you, have you, do you go play carnival games? Uh, do the rides? Do you go see the animals in the, uh, you know, in the 4-H buildings or is it mostly just the uh, cookies and the food? I have two nieces, so we have to go see the animals. Absolutely, of course. So they're a big fan of that. Huh. All right. So we got to talk to the uh, to the South Carolinian, I guess. Uh, has have you been to the fair before? I have been. Yes. All right. And, and when they first said, "Hey, uh, you know, we're going to go to the state fair," uh, what was your first thought? Like, really, a state fair? And then how did it maybe meet or exceed your expectation as to what the state fair was all about when you actually did go? So I had actually never been to any state fair before. So I knew it could be a little bit overwhelming just from seeing pictures and everything. Um, and it definitely was. There were <laughs> lots of people, lots of options for food and just so many different things. So it was very cool though. I mean, I thought it was super cool and I enjoyed it, yeah. And, and do you have a favorite uh, food that you tried as you walked around the, the fairgrounds? Um, I tried the sweet potato churros. I don't know if you guys have had those, but I really like those. They were good? Yeah. yeah it sounds good. It sounds good. I, I keep, as I do these with all the teams, I'm adding to the list for next year. <laughs> Hopefully we're all there, but there's a lot of food. You think you know them all, and then you hear all these new new things. So sweet potato churros, is that what they were? Yeah, I'll have to jot, jot that one down. Coach, how about you? Uh, are you? Do you like to go to the fair? Do you take the family to the fair now as well as the team? Oh, yeah. We, we make a day of it. So we usually get on the bus near our house, and we, we go, uh, the four of us, we usually meet my in-laws there as well, and we're there all day, all day long. We do, we do the rides. So I have a six-year-old and a four-year-old. So the rides are a big deal for them. They, you know, the food is, I think, more for the parents. You know, the, the kids really don't care a whole lot about that. Um, but yeah, we, we spend the whole day, and we, we have a great time. And do you have any favorites that are must-dos when you get there? I love the sweet corn. I, I can never pass that up. It just, it, it smells great. It tastes great. I, it's always, I have to hit the sweet corn. Yeah, it really is good. And it's, it's got, a, some of it's like grilled. Sometimes it's just boiled, whatever. It's, it, it is pretty amazing. That's for sure. Um, I should ask you how, let, let's say the season happens. Um, you're in a position with some really good gymnasts and how optimistic you had such a great year last year and you'd kind of been building uh, this, this upward trend. Um, how optimistic are you that uh, you guys are going to have a really nice season if it happens? 
Uh, I'm very optimistic. I mean, we, we had a fantastic year last year. We did lose some pretty incredible seniors, but we're also gaining some pretty awesome freshmen. So um, I think, you know, their transition is going to be big for us, but I think we have uh, the talent and to really uh, to con continue what we did last year, but even build on it and even go further. Lexi, um, obviously everyone's a freshman at some point. So these talented freshmen coming in um, as, as one of the leaders of the team now, how do you have to help uh, integrate them in and make sure they feel welcome and understand, you know, what they need to do to, uh, to, to be part and have an impact? Yeah, this year is definitely really unique as the freshmen aren't there during the summer. So they're going to have a lot on their plate, you know, a new environment and um, gymnastics and everything. So really being a senior and us upperclassmen really need to help the freshmen and just guide them and tell them, hey, it's going to be all right and it's going to get better kind of thing. Um, but we're really excited for them and we're ready to have a great year. Yeah, and Anna, when you came in as a freshman, especially from a long ways away, did you have some seniors or juniors at that time that helped uh, make you feel welcome and, and, and get you accustomed to what, what college life was all about and being a gymnast? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think from that experience with those seniors, I've kind of learned, like, how to kind of do it that way um, because it just helped so much. And uh, it's just made it so much easier to ask them questions and to just um, know that they're there for whatever we needed. Coach, were we able to reschedule the Oklahoma match, or is that now a no-go? Are we going to try something else to try to get another sellout for the winter? Uh, we're working on it. We're working on it. Yeah, we want, we'd love to get them back. Um, I think we're uh, – I think we can do that again. I, I want to sell out, and I certainly want our, our athletes to be able to experience that, that environment for sure. Yeah, well, let's keep our fingers crossed that there's competition, that these guys uh, all get a chance to go out and, and, and perform in front of, uh, at a minimum, at least their families. Maybe, who knows, if fans will be allowed, but let's hope it happens, and let's hope uh, there's a, a couple of big crowds, and let's hope a year from now that we're all on the stage at the State Fair and sweet potato churros are being eaten by all. <laughs> Good to see everybody. We want to thank you. Uh, it was good to get some insight on the uh, on the team and uh, and as they uh, as you guys all get back uh, to campus and uh, gelling as a team, we'll look forward to seeing you back on campus. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good to see everybody. There it is. Our state fair virtual interview. We're talking women's gymnastics. Mm -hmm.